Mr. <coughs> Mr. C Stephen Hui, Principal Chen, Mr. Walls, teachers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure and honor to celebrate with you the 50th birthday of your prestigious school. Thank you. I was wondering whether when I speak in Cantonese, I will receive the same applause as Mr. Walls. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, um, when I was preparing my speech for this important occasion, I was thinking about car racing. Um, I don't know whether any one of you have seen uh, Formula One racing or any car race in the world like the important event or, um, in Monte Carlo, the Grand Prix, or in the United States, Indianapolis 500. Those are the biggest event in car racing. However, have you noticed that the, mo the car which wins the champion is usually not just the most uh, powerful engine and the best car mate, but there are a number of other criteria for them to win the trophy. The most powerful engine, if we can uh, dramatize it into a human being, will become the brain of a man. So what I'm trying to speak to you is uh, in the title of Life as a Race. I would really like to point out to you that he who wins the race in our life are not just people who are extremely smart with a high IQ. Usually people that are really clever and learn fast with good memories and be able to analyze things like peeling an onion. Well, I'm afraid that good IQ itself is not a ticket to success. Top students in my high school or even in a university may not merge as the most successful person in their future career. In fact, important people, very successful scientists and politicians have demonstrated that. Einstein almost failed in his high school, and Churchill was not even admitted to a university, not to mention that he speak with a stutter. Well, then what else do we need for a race car to win the championship. You need a brick. You need a good brick for the car. A good brick in a human being represents good self-control and self-discipline. When things go wrong, you know when to stop. You won't let yourself indulge into bad habits and you won't let yourself relax in your laziness. You won't let yourself do something wrong and take the easy way out. You will not let money, frame, or power to corrupt you. Self-disciplined, a good break, is something that needs to be trained. Second, you need a good suspension in a car, Beizhen. A suspension that can keep you steady when the road is bumpy. In fact, the road to success is often not flat. There are stones and rubbles on the way which may rock the car and throw the driver out of the car. And there might even be big holes and hurdles that will shake up your faith. A good suspension that keeps you steady, not to give up easily, is mandatory when you face challenges in your life. Calmness and faith in our God will be the suspension of our car, and that also needs to be trained. Thirdly, in order to win a, a race, the car also needs to have a fuel tank big enough to carry you through long distance. Sometimes the destination in our life is quite far, and it may not be, even be within your visual range. 
Other times you may have gone astray, you were lost on your way, and the gas in the big tank will carry you through a long journey. So what do we need in our life is perseverance. It's sometimes that you need to continue on to press on when the night is long, hard work is required, and you will not give up but to persevere. And that needs to be trained. However, ladies and gentlemen, the most important criteria, the most important factor that makes a racing car wins a champion, in fact, is to have a good driver. A good driver who knows where he wants to go and never lost focus. A good driver can exercise judgment, make sensible decisions, know when to stop, on, when to step on the gas, and when to make a turn, when to slow down, and when to come to a stop. A good driver abides to the law and regulations. They are guided by their high moral standard and won't cut the corner and won't do something illegal. A good driver knows how to use his car properly and safely. A good driver in our life is the one who follows the teaching of our Lord in the Bible. So you will need a good car with a good engine, a good brake that is sensitive enough to tell you when to stop, a good suspension system, a big tank, but most important of all, to have a good driver. You see, we do not applaud a, a well-built car with a powerful engine, a sensitive brake, and good suspension system, but we applaud a winning driver, a person with emotion, emotional maturity and good sense to make the right decision even under pressure. We look for someone with integrity, someone we can trust, someone not only have self-interest, but also be interested in his neighbors and his community. I think this is the kind of students and this is the kind of young people that we are looking forward to as our future leader. And I think this is the mission of every school, every teacher, every educator to nurture such a generation of young people. Well, you have heard Mr. Hoi uh, cited my previous uh, work. That is the unimportant part. Let me give you the more important side of my story. I graduated from the oldest government boys' school in Hong Kong, but I was definitely not at the top of my class in that school. In fact, I barely got into the medical faculty of University of Hong Kong in 1978. Don't tell people about that. <laughs> then I found myself studying with a group of really, really talented students. In those days, in a class of 150 medical students, there were 140 boys and only 10 girls. But the 10 girls are really, really smart. I still remember there was a small and very fragile looking girl who always whipped in front of the examination hall saying that she is going to fail. And when the result comes out, she got all the straight A's. And, <laughs> and we boys were feeling so sorry for ourselves. But there were many talents. They were fast to learn, got good memories, great analytical mind. Most important of all, they know how to pass the examination. But for me, I found the subjects, especially in preclinical medicine when we study biochemistry, anatomy, and physiology, extremely dry and boring. I do not know why I have to memorize all these human structures, difficult names of bacteria, which is usually using Latins instead of English, and drugs that I cannot even pronounce their name properly. I have no idea. It was in fact only in the last two years of my medical studies, when I come to clinical medicine, that I did slightly better. In fact, I got distinction in surgery but what I liked was internal medicine. I was not a top student in my class. 
So I was, signed, I was assigned to work in a newly built hospital remotely located in the new territory called Sha Tin. <laughs> now I'm not joking, Sha Tin literally means sandy farms, right? So it was a newly developed city and I have no idea why I was assigned to work there. I could not enter the medical specialty that I was interested in. I could not find a good mentor despite the fact that I was trying to work very hard and keen to learn. So life is not always a straight line. Your role can be really dodgy. I could not see the future of my career during that time. And in fact, I was so frustrated with my job that I decided to quit my medical doctor's position and went to Canada to pursue research. That was the year 1989. When I finished my PhD, unfortunately, Canada went into the biggest economic crisis. The major recession in the early 90s has led to closing down of almost half of all the hospitals and 50% of all the hospital beds across the country. So I have no choice but to return to Hong Kong. And I told myself that I will only be staying here for a year. But from that year onward, my fate has changed. I enjoy my lecturer's job at the Chinese University and my clinical work. I build a team of gastroenterologists. Gastro means the stomach, entero means the intestine. So it's a group of doctors who looks after the stomach and the intestine. So I uh, handpick uh, the good graduates, the smartest boys and girls, and we build a team of gastroenterologists. And from there, we work day and night, we publish papers, we look for innovative ways to treat our patients, and we started to thrive. I became the youngest person to be promoted to become a full professor before the age of 40, and I became head of medicine at the Prince of Wales Hospital at 41. So I thought my career will be bright and prosperous. Not to know that only two years later, Hong Kong was hit by a mysterious disease called SARS, and that was in 2003. But to me, and for many of us, it was the worst of times, it was also the best of times, Charles Dickens. Our work at that time received unprecedented support from the public and from international peers. So ladies and gentlemen, I tell you this story trying to illustrate to you that I come from a humble background as well. I, why, why did you laugh? I really come from a humble background. I was not graduated from Harvard or Oxford. My engine was not a particularly strong one. My ability to learn my memory power and my analytical power has a lot of room for improvement. My break was probably okay, but it, was, but it was refined and getting stronger over many, many failures and ups and downs. I don't have bad habits and my faith guided me to walk in the right path, thanks to the Lord Jesus. My suspension system was, however, not bad because I could, I could withstand failures, challenges, and difficult time. And that, again, was very much related to my faith in God, and I pray to God when I'm in trouble. But most importantly, over the years, I have learned to be a good driver. My guidebook is the Bible. His word has been my beacon and the lamb in the dark. He is the anchor of my ship in the stormy days. And I urge you to follow him closely. Then you become a good driver. You may not be driving the best race car, but you know where you want to go to. 
and you will not lose focus. And before I end, I would like to ask all the teachers and the principals and the founding principal to raise from your seats to receive a big round of applause from our students. So please, can I have all the teachers standing up, please? To our teachers there. We are, we are here celebrating your success and your achievement over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. May the glory be to our Lord. Thank you.